Hey folks, it's Jordy here for Cinecam.net and welcome to Copycat Friday. Every week we recreate an effect from a film or music video, but today is a little bit different. We are going to recreate the color grading look of three Oscar nominated films. We're going to build the set, recreate the lighting and finally show you guys how to color grade using Adobe Premiere Pro's new method. A big shout out to our sponsor Loop Deck. We've made a video about their color correction panel before and really love to work with it. All of us have a Loop Deck Plus here in the office and basically this is a control panel that has a bunch of dials, wheels and buttons to control the sliders and settings within Lumetri. Now, many of our friends also purchased one after seeing our first video and they are all super happy with it. You can follow the first link in the description below for more information and also we are going to use this panel more throughout the video but of course if you don't have one you can still follow along. We're going to start with the Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Now, this one is not nominated for Best Picture but it is nominated for Screenplay and Costume Design. We're going to recreate the famous scene which is also popular within memes. For this one we'll need to be outside. In the scene of Battle of the Buster Scruggs, there's really no light setup you need to do. The only thing you need to make sure of is that the sunlight comes from the correct side and on the other side you want to lift your shadows up with like a white reflector or anything white, like my jacket for example. The Ballad of Buster Scruggs and not the battle is shot on the Ari Alexa Studio and Mini. It has a very warm filmic look and I do have to mention that I'm not a professional colorist myself and that's why we're going to keep it basic and just try to match it as good as possible in a fun and quick way. Inside Lumetri I'm going to start off with making my shot warmer using the temperature. You can go pretty far and this will make your shot very orange and red so we're going to compensate by adding green into the shot. But as you do so pay attention to the skin tones and make sure that they become natural. Now this will make your shot very saturated as well so we're going to decrease that and I'm going to set mine to around 60. If your shot doesn't have enough contrast you can go ahead and increase that as well. We're already coming close but there's one last thing missing which are the skin tones. They're very deep in the film so let's try and recreate that as well. For this I'm going to jump into the curves and make sure that the U saturation curves are expanded. From here we can select the skin tones and solely make an adjustment on that. The skin tones are way too bright so I'm going to jump into the U versus Luma and this means that I can select a U on the curve which is going to be orange. You can also take the color picker to select the skin tones if you're not sure and then simply drag down the curve in between making the skin tones darker and this will automatically saturate that area as well bringing more warmth to Jenik's face. Hmm, first time. The next film is Roma which is very interesting as it has a black and white color grading. Now black and white is a lot more than just pulling down the saturation. But first let's build the set. The next film is going to be a Netflix film called Roma and I'm going to play Cleo. As you can see I'm all dressed up just like her. Now we looked for a scene from the trailer that was easily to recreate and that's why we came up with the bedroom scene in which we just have like the back of the bed. Uh, we've got a painting on top, we don't have a painting here so we use this plaque. Our 1 million plaque, not official but it's way cooler than the official one. Uh, I'm just sitting on a box right here and then we've got a little uh, light right here, a, a bedroom desk light. Now to uh, emphasize that lighting to kind of make it a little bit more stronger we are actually also working with a softbox over there the aperture 120D with also an orange filter over that light because even though that Roma is a black and white film if you're going to mix different colors of light it's going to give a way different tone if you would uh, pull down the saturation. Uh, so that's why we're just going to work further with tungsten which is the same color temperature as the desk lights right here. Roma was shot on the Aria Alexa 65 in color and not on film or a digital monochrome camera. So that means they had to color grade the film to black and white which is not easy to do. 
You could already go ahead and decrease the saturation for your clip, making it black and white, but unfortunately, it's not that simple. We're gonna have to tweak the black and white a whole lot more to get it good. And there are thousands of flavors within black and white, and the color tools can actually help us with that. But let's start with the contrast first. I'm going to increase the exposure, giving me more room to work with the shadows. And this will blow up to highlight, so make sure to decrease that right after. I can now pull down the absolute blacks, and because we first increased that exposure, we are keeping more detail in the darker areas. The next adjustment will be the temperature. And although this might seem weird, but pulling down the temperature will actually darken the skin tones and other red areas. You can also see it well here in the YouTube logo. But it's a nice trick to change the exposure on those areas. Alright, we're coming close. Next up, I'm going to jump into the color wheels. Because we've desaturated the clip on top, it means that we can actually push colors back into the shot using these wheels. And I'm going to do that with the mid-tones. You want to push a tiny bit of magenta in there. Be careful not to overdo it. The magenta should actually not be visible, but it's going to take the edge off that hard black and white look. It's going to romanticize the look while still retaining that black and white. And now let's jump into the final step, which can be found under vignette. We're just going to decrease the amount a tiny bit, introducing this vignette on the edge, which can also be slightly seen in the film itself. And that's about it. The simple way. Now let's continue with the last film, which is Bohemian Rhapsody, the story behind Freddie Mercury and his band Queen. Amazing film, definitely worth watching, and it is nominated for Best Picture. Look! I'm behind the window! Me too! I do! Look how cute these clams are! Jordy ordered them wrong, but they are perfect for my window. Let's do that. After we are done with the wall, we are going to do the lighting. When recreating a look from a movie, you can come far with only color grading. But when you really want the same look and feel, your lighting has to match with the original. First we start with the key light on my right side. This is the primary light, which is the brightest. Then you have a fill light on the left side. This light is very dimmed and is there to make my shadows less deep and still have some detail. The backlight stands right above me and is a third light. Because it comes from the top, you get a beautiful halo like in the film. The last light sits behind our window and is a practical light. We also had to use a lot of smoke behind the wall, otherwise you wouldn't get the feeling of a room filled with light. So that was the light setup, now let's get Freddy here and make the shot. And now the color grading, and this one was actually the hardest one of all, but we're going to do our best. Starting off, I'm going to make sure the temperature is a little bit warmer. Pay attention to the highlights on the skin tones as you do so. Next, we're going to jump into the color wheels. Push a little bit of teal into the shadows, but don't overdo it, you want to make it subtle. Then for the mid-tones, we're going to push orange into it, and this can be a little more than with the shadows. Finally, I'm going to decrease the exposure levels of the shadows and crush the blacks. And that's the basic setup. We're now going to click on the top drop-down menu and select Add Lumetri Color Effects, and this will add a second Lumetri effect. All adjustments done in here will also affect our previous grading. From the basic corrections here, you could also add a little bit more contrast if needed. Our highlight was also too hard, so I decreased the highlights as well. Next, jump into the curves, U Saturation Curves. The blacks should be black and not teal, so we're going to fix that right here. From the Luma vs. Saturation, we can select the darker areas on the left and pull it down, decreasing the saturations in the black. Alright, one last step, we're going to increase the saturation of the teals, which is Lorenzo's jacket. For that, I'm jumping into the U vs. Saturation curves. Make a selection around the teal and pull it up to increase that color saturation. And that's it. I also, I also write songs. Our lead singer just quit. Then you'll need someone new. And those were the three Oscar-nominated films and their color grading. Now everything was shot on the Red Gemini, and if you would like to play around with those shots yourself, you can actually download the raw files from the link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Loop Deck, for the support. Definitely make sure to check out your Loop Deck Plus, guys. But more importantly, stay creative. We are going to the thrift shop to look for some accessories for our sets. It's a little bit too tight, but it works, I guess. You look pretty, Lorenzo. Thank you, Janik. Oh no, there's a dragon at our headquarters. 
What should we do? Oh no!